Hey guys! Hey guys! Due to popular request, for the first time ever, we have merch of our cats! Yay! We're so excited to finally share these with you guys. As you might notice, we got some of our cats' greatest moments. We got Cat and Pokey, we got Face Motion Haku, we got Banana Hat Haku, we got Nagi with his clam and pull and his dragonfly toy. We've been working on these designs with Crowdmade for the past month. We love how they turned out, they're so cute! June is wearing our limited edition. Christmas design. This will be sold until the end of December. After that, it will disappear forever. Our shirts are manufactured by Bell and Canvas. They do most of their manufacturing in LA. They're guaranteed no sweatshops anywhere in their production line. I looked into their company quite a bit and I couldn't find anything that suggested otherwise. They seem like they have a really good reputation for being an ethical brand, which was really important to us. The shirts are really soft and comfortable. I don't like wearing anything unless it feels comfy. On Me neither. It is super comfy. <laughs> I'm not wearing anything underneath it. When we first got these, before I washed them, the inside seam felt a little noticeable to me while I was wearing it. But after washing, it got softer, and I can't really tell uh, that it's there at all mm. right now. The cut for Bell and Canvas shirts are supposed to be very high quality. I'm wearing the slim fitting shirt for those of you who have curves or boobs or like maybe smaller arms. This is unisex. June is wearing a unisex shirt. The sleeves are long enough for him. This, he just likes having them like rolled up halfway. He's, I think it's because the guy cook often. Yeah. He's wearing an M size unisex. I'm six foot one, 185 centimeters, and M size actually is the best for me, even. I'm wearing a small, slim fitting shirt. It fits me really well. Your height is 160. 166 centimeters. Feet. Fit. Uh, five foot five. five the shirts are like a medium thickness when you're wearing them. Unless it's a light shirt and a really dark or bright colored bra, you can't see through it. I'm wearing the same color shirt and a light bra, and you can't tell. Where does my bra start and stop? You have no idea. And this is me wearing a dark blue bralette. Can you see where it starts and stops? Mm, not really. It's got chunky straps. Unless I like pull it really tight, I guess you can't oh, tell. Oh, okay, yeah. I have to like pull it. This is already very form fitting, and I guess how noticeable is it? Just normal, normal human movements. Is it? <laughs> yeah, totally fine. Okay. <laughs> if you live in the U.S., the latest date you can order these, where they would be guaranteed to arrive for Christmas, would be December fifteenth. Hmm. Um, after that, who knows? <laughs> also, because of Corona, uh, manufacturing in the U.S. has been like really limited this past year. So some sizes and colors especially are somewhat limited uh, once they sell out, who knows, maybe months before we're able to get them restocked. Mm. So it's kind of a first come, first serve sort of situation. I'm really sorry if something sells out that you wanted. I'm also working on bags and I'm going to announce it on my cooking channel too. Anyway, let's get into our actual video. Building house in Japan. Hey guys. Hey guys. Uh, we are here with our current floor plan. This is iteration like eight. Now, what are we on? Close to 10. <laughs> In a process. But it's fun um, building the house in Japan. This is normal, as they said, for their estimated schedule for building the house. They put in like two to three months just for like finalizing the floor plan. We actually get to design the whole floor plan ourselves along with the housing company's architect. And as long as it's within the limits of what's structurally necessary for the house, which are primarily these, these squares here and here are very thick steel beams. They, we have to have one of these at least every six meters. And that's kind of one of the main hard limits of designing the floor plan for this house. That's one of the reasons we chose. It's very, very wide, the distance. Yeah, there's like. a lot of freedom with the design that we can make. Of course, another limit is budget, which <laughs> This is a very hard limit. Mm. This is super cute. This is a little doodle our architect drew upside down, by the way, so that we would have an image of how the laundry chute is gonna work. <laughs> I just thought it was really cute. I like how he drew the little people. This was the first time for him to even kind of hear this concept of laundry chute. 
Oh, actually you know, doing it in, pr doing it in practice? Some some Japanese houses have laundry sheets. Yeah, but for but our... it's his first time putting a laundry sheet yeah. into their house. And he... We're gonna have a very culturally mixed house. <laughs> our house is not Japanese and it's not Western. It's a really strong mix of both. And I think it's cool. Like yeah. this. Like, I think we get the best of everything. Like this, our Genkan. We are having a Genkan where you take off the shoes and then you step up into the house. But in most Japanese houses, this is in like a little hallway and then there's a door to like the rest of the house. But ours is just gonna be open. We didn't want really dark entrance. Yes. So the, the, this is window, so it's pretty bright. And also the heating and cooling will come all the way out to the Genkan. So when we first walk inside, for example, on a cold day, We'll get some of the heat rather than the whole Genkan hallway being cold and then you're not getting any heat until you open up a door to the living room or something. Mm. One other thing I wanted to say about the limits of designing our house. Um, obviously the architect has like degrees in architecture or whatever. He knows what he's doing as far as design goes as well. And if we throw out ideas that are really ridiculous, he'll be like, that's gonna look awful. <laughs> like maybe we should do it like this. This makes more sense. Uh, very nice, very nicely. Very politely. He's very kind. I really, really like the people we're working with. They're yep. wonderful. This is what I've been talking about the last couple videos. This is going to be our Nekohogo room, which is basically like a foster room, except we're not going to obviously foster cats in a small room. This is mainly going to be a quarantine room. So if we find a cat out on the streets that's got like an injury of some sort or whatever and we're gonna try to foster them then for the first month they'll stay in here until we can get them tested and make sure they don't have any diseases that they can pass on to the rest of our cats mm. uh, and then after that they'll be able to come out here just like with peachy um, these now i don't have to give up my whole room yeah <laughs> we're gonna have now it's it officially peachy's room there's no my room anymore yeah when we don't have a cat in here, it'll be one of the spots we put our cat's litter boxes. Um, so this is a sliding door. When we don't have a cat in here, we can just keep the sliding door open. And this shelf right next to it is that shelf, our cat shelf, our Ikea cat shelf. That's where we'll keep all of the litter bags and everything. So we'll easily be able to go back and forth from these. Um, so like I mentioned about these pillars, we can kind of do whatever we want in between them. And this part on both sides of the cat room pillar are gonna be full glass walls. So the cat is able to see out to what we're doing during the day. Um, hopefully the cat will be able to see most of the kitchen as well. That's very important for the new cats or whichever cats in their room, right? Yeah, so- To be able to see what's out there. Yes, so- all the research I was doing, and we talked to our vet about these things as well. Um, it was all saying when you bring in a new cat, you should actually put them in a small spot because a cat changing territory is very, very stressful for the cat and they need time to feel comfortable in a smaller room is less for them to explore, it's less open. You want the cats to get used to the noise of people walking around and doing stuff. You want them to get used to the smells and everything of just like daily human life. Because if you have this cat like hidden away in the bedroom or somewhere else, or like here in June's kitchen room, it's just mostly quiet in there. And they're not really getting used to anything unless we go into the room where they are. So we want the cats to be in the middle of the house. That's why that's here. And one thing, if we can make it work, we have a vision. We wanna kinda try to make it look like a nakaniwa, an indoor garden which is a very... Uh, Traditional Japanese style house idea yeah. concept. This is our inspiration for the cat room. Obviously this doesn't look like a cat room and it'll need to have a pillar in the corner for uh, like the steel support beam. So it won't be all open like this, but if we can make it work, I wanna kind of try to make it look like a Nakaniwa. Of course, um, cat stuff will have priority it's not gonna be a gravel floor or something that's uncomfortable for cats to walk on. Oh, it's It'll even uncomfortable for me to walk into. <laughs> It'll be cat comfort prioritized first, but if we can figure out a way to kind of design it so it makes 
so it looks like a Nakaniwa, I think that would be really cool. Uh, some greens, fake greens. That's my plan. Anyway, I explained this whole cat room so I can give you the basis for a problem we have in the living room that we're trying to solve right now. This is our, and this rectangle is our entertainment system. Mm. And these are our two trees. If we kept it as is for this new living room, it would start blocking some of the cat room. If we put the entertainment system all the way in the corner, then even though the living room boundary line is all the way out here, the TV would be like here. And that would be super off to the side. And we definitely want the TV to be in the middle. So we have a couple different ways we can try to fix this problem. We can redesign the house some way, which we really don't want to do anymore. We've redesigned it so many times. We like this design. We also have budget that we can. <laughs> we could get rid of the cat room, but I don't want to. I want the cat room. We could try to make the living room wall a little bit longer by making the house like wider, but budget wise, that would increase uh, Significantly. the cost a lot. Or we could go with a different type of entertainment system, which is probably what we're gonna have to do. That's probably the cheapest way to do things, which I'm very sad about. I really like this entertainment system. When we got it, it was with the intention of using it for the rest of our lives, but. But well, we'll still keep and use it. Yeah. We've got another spot we can put this in our house when we move. It doesn't make sense for there to be an entertainment system there, but like we could also try to use it in another way where like some of the parts come apart. We could take it. The left part. Apart you can use it as a shelf. Differently. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Thinking maybe we can like mount the TV on the wall like all the fancy people do. As we've mentioned many times, we've been <laughs> using Pinterest a lot. We've got a whole bunch of ideas of like wall mounted TVs that we're looking at. I think this is kind of similar to the layout of our house because there will be right. the Fukinuke up there and the wall is a little bit more narrow than our current living room and then the door would be like the cat room. Right. So we're probably going with something just super simple like this. Yeah, I like it. By the way, thank you so much to Patrick from 28 Mobile for our new phones, which we are eternally grateful for because- Our phone was dying. I've been using, I'm still using an iPhone 6 and I don't know if you can see this, but like if I take up this screen protector, the glass is not attached to the phone anymore. Oh, the actual iPhone glass? Yes, the actual iPhone glass, oh. like the touch screen. It's attached to the screen protector and oh. not the glass. I was just planning on using this until we built our house and I just thought I would have to walk around with like a, a charger plugged into it at all times. Um, and then out of nowhere, we got a message from an old friend. Thank you, Victor. So thank you, uh, 28 Mobile. Yep. Really saved our butts. Yep, and yeah, so loving this. We got to stop arguing about should we spend money buying new phones when we're supposed to be saving for a house. This living room area is a little large, as well as like the kitchen and the dining room area. At least before COVID, we had people over here all the time, like almost every weekend, people come over, we cook something amazing in the kitchen, we eat it together, and then we play some games. If it's too late for them to get a train back at night, they'll sleep over or something. We've had people sleep over here a ton, and that's really fun for us. That's like the main, one of the main reasons we moved to Fukuoka, so we could hang out with friends more. It's Socialize. Really, it's really important to us. <laughs> We've probably had people spend the night here a total of more than two months worth of days, just in 2020 alone. Even with like all of the months that we were socially distancing during COVID. We had a friend who got a herniated cervical disc in her neck and like she couldn't use her arm without extreme pain. So she stayed here for a couple weeks so we could help her make food and not die <laughs> and stuff. So like we just have people here a lot and we really like it. That's like how we want our life to be. So we want a spot that's big enough for people to hang out. I'll try to find some photos that I can put in to show you an example of like how cramped things are. Our current living room, dining room, kitchen area in this apartment is large for a, a Japanese apartment. Very big. It's very large. And even with this size, 
it's very cramped <laughs> when we have like four people who all want to cook together in the kitchen at the same time and we have like eight people trying to sit down at this table to eat afterwards. There's not quite enough space. Anyway, let's go look for TV board ideas. Fun chair store? Yeah. All right. See you, Nagi.